people. All right. Welcome to another segment of Trey on the Tape. All right. Today, no breaking down plays. All we're going to talk about today is Dickerson and Maya Lada. That's it. We're just going to be talking about those two guys and just how they develop throughout the season. All right. Of course, you can't talk too much offensive line play without talking Kelsey. So I'll mention him every now and then and a couple things. And then also we'll throw some Lane Johnson talking there just every now and then, but not that much. The main focus is going to be on these two right here. Now, keep in mind, when you can see their face, they will be on the right side of the screen. All right. Keep that in mind now for everybody that needs arrows and circles. Now, when the ball is going the other way, they will be on the left side of the screen. Now, I don't talk about myself too much in these videos, but allow me to set the scene real quick. Picture it. Cleveland, 2004. Yeah, I watched the Golden Girls. R.I.P. Betty White. All right, so now let's get back into some football. All right, all right, here we go. 2004 Cleveland. All right, that's me at left tackle. Artis Hicks is at left guard. That's Buns at center. All right, and there's an arrow to point it out. All right, so now let's just take a look at what Artis Hicks does here. All right, just check a look at it. Mm. All right, so now, here we go. I take my set at my end, all right? So now, Artis Hicks, he secures the one tick, and then he comes and looks for work. That's what I'm talking about here. So now, let's just take another look at this from a different angle, and also pay attention to the sack clock right here. Man, five seconds to throw the ball. That's what I'm talking about. But it's not about me and how awesome we were. It's about these two. Let's get into it. All right, so here we go. Same scenario, right? He got a one technique. You got Jordan setting the DN. Come, come on, Lane. Come on, come on, Dickerson. Go, go get him. But all right, cool. That's something that you're gonna have to continue to develop and grow as a player. But here you go. This is one of the things that I think he does really well at times, especially during this game right here. He did a good job of staying in balance and shooting his hand. All right, so now let's just take another look at it again. All right, Dickerson staying in balance. Jordan does a really good job of setting vertical, and then Dickerson just shoots his hands, shuts down that game before it even gets started. I mean, they kept in a not really good relationship to each other. All right, so now. Let's move on to the next clip. Now, look at Dickerson. Good extension with hands right now. Run your guy outfield. Now, start lagging the shoulder. Don't let him spin back. You just want to keep working on that when you're on this side. Now, let's just take a look at the big fella. Now, I'm not too crazy about running out that jump set in with your chest, and you, but that little snatch trap or whatever they call that there, it worked. All right, so now one of the most important things about guard and tackle plate is trusting that your guy is going to be there. So here we go. Jordan gets the inside move. Dickinson is right there for him to clean it up. All right, so now let's just move on to the next clip. All right, enter Lane Johnson to the equation. Here we go. Spin on a spinner. Now, I'm not a big fan of this technique. When it works, it looks awesome. But then there are other times that it doesn't. We'll get into that a little later. All right, so now let's look at Dickerson. Every now and then, he, when he oversets those wide three techniques, giving up the inside, but, hey, he battles it out, all right? So now let's just look at Jordan Mile out of here. Now, I always felt that this game right here, I know he was injured in this game, and he had some bad sets, but then he had some really nice ones right there where he shot his hand, stayed in balance, and stayed inside out. Moving on to the next clip. All right, so here we go now. Let's take a look at Jordan Mile out of here first. Now, this was a rough game for him at times. He got hit with the Chuck Smith cross body chop move that everybody's working right now. All right, so, you know, he got beat on that one. All right, so now let's look at Dickerson here. All right, so now I'm not a big fan of dropping that inside foot because now you get picked with the game inside. All right, so now here we go. Lane Johnson spinning on the spinner. When it works, it looks amazing. But then there are times when you're thinking that the spin is going to come. Oh, no, he's not spinning. Oh, damn. Okay. All right. But, hey, it's not about that. We're going to move on to the next clip. All right. So, here we go. Next clip. All right. So, Dickerson, come on. Come on. Come on. You see your man over there battling. Come get him. Come take his head off. I want to see some more of that next year. All right. Moving on. All right. So, here we go. Now, look at Jordan. Nice work. You know, you're trying to that little Chuck Smith move. You can punch through that, but make sure you lag the shoulder because you do not want the defensive end working back inside of you. Punch through that. But I thought Dickerson did a good job right here of keeping his feet staying in balance and keep working. All right, so in this next clip right here, Dickinson just has to be careful with oversetting. This is something that I see that he does every now and then gets those wide threes. All right, and then again, they could have just been trying to send help to Jordan right here. But again, I mean, the defensive end isn't going to rush to his help. He's going to take the edge. So now just make sure that you never want to abandon the center. You kind of want to stay in a good relationship to him. All right, so this right here is just, look at just the, both the guards. 
This is why you should wear knee braces. Put on some damn knee braces. All right, so on this next clip right here, let's just take a look at this, all right? So now, can't overset, because now they're gonna start playing you for that, especially if they know Kelsey's going away. Just make sure you stay tight, all right? So now, here we go. Now, look at this clip right here. This was absolutely amazing here. I'm gonna show it to you again. All right, so now, look at Dickerson here. Excellent hands, lags the shoulder, plays him for the spin, puts him on the ground. That right there is textbook. Let's just show it one more again. Here it is right here. Didn't know it said shoots the hands. All right, now lag the shoulder. Here you go. Play it. Boom. Put him on the ground. There you go. Job well done. All right, so now here we go. Dickerson with a one technique. Watch how he power steps, shoots his hands, stays in good balance, anchors absolutely excellent work right here to the point where he doesn't even want to let the rusher go. Now, Joy Maialato. I'm going to slow it down a little bit because everybody remembers their first outside spin move. I got it against Green Bay. Uh, Cullen Jenkins hit me with it. And then when it this right about here is when you say, oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Where did he go? I hope the quarterback gets rid of the ball because I have nothing for you. And luckily, Hurts gets rid of the ball. All right, moving on to the next clip. All right, so in this play right here, all right, my two amigos, they jump everybody. Now look at Kelsey. Uh, all right, now, uh, wait, let me go over here and get some more work. Uh, Anybody else need some of this? All right, so now let's move on to Detroit, all right? Because there are a couple things on here that just need to be corrected, all right? So now, here we go. Now, let's just take a look. Now, here's Dickerson right here in a two-point stance, all right? Oversets, gets beat inside. That's a problem that he has against some of those wide three techniques and then Jordan Maialata gets edge. Now, this is all the same series here. All right, so here's the very next play. Now he's down in a three-point stance. What kind of play do you think it's going to be? It's a run play, all right? So now, here's the very next play. He's in a two-point stance. What kind of play you think it is? It's a pass play. You don't want to give away what you're doing by your stance. All right, so now we're going to move on to this next clip here, all right? So now look at Jordan Mylott. It does a really good job staying in balance, shoots his hands, all right? So now, I mean, the DM must feel like he's fighting against two damn light poles out there. But now Dickerson and Kelsey, man, you nestled up. This is how it's done. <clears throat> That's what you want to see. I mean, you know, Kelsey has it on lock. He's good. You know, you know, that's good. You got Jordan out there battling by himself on the island. Come out there and take his head off. All right, so now in this next clip, this is something that, you know, that's just sweeping the league and all across college football and everywhere. That little crossbody chop, everybody's working it. Chuck Smith is doing a hell of a job of teaching it and getting it, pushing it around the league right now. Now with Dickerson now, one of the things that he had, like I told you earlier in a couple earlier clips, he gets overset sometimes, get beat inside, and damn near took Kelsey out. Something that he really needs to be mindful of. All right, so now I'm just going to show this one clip against Denver. Now, when they're jump setting like this, they have to be in a little bit better relationship because they were on different levels, and luckily the back was there to clean that up. All right, so now we're going to move on to the Tampa game. Now, there was some difference in technique here that I, you know, I'm not a big fan of, all right? First of all, now let's take a set. Look at how everybody's hands are being carried right now. Everybody looks like we're about to go to a pistol fight in front of the okay corral hands are down you got your hands wide and you're trying to sink those double underhand hooks the double underhand hooks only work if you have a bull rusher that's not going to do anything but run right into you so now again let's take a look at it just watch what happens hands are down hands are wide everybody's looking like they're about to draw a pistol and then now you try to sink those double underhand hooks look at how his feet sink back look at how his hips sink back just all out of position and that's what happens when you try to work double underhand hooks against someone that can work edge it gets you out of position but that's something that's being taught so now take a look at him against against the Raiders look at the difference in balance look at when you shoot your hands how he carried his hands in there I'm a, you know what I'm just gonna show that to you one more time take a look at it here we go look at it nice set hands are up punches there you go, in much better position. You're getting edge, but you can re you can react, you can recover. You end up putting a spinner into the ground. The double on the hand hooks are cool if you got somebody running into you, but if you get edged, you end up out of position. Well, my friends, that's one to end on. Uh-oh, thank, thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Let you cool down. Uh, and if you threw a party, 
invited everyone you knew. You would see the biggest gift would be from me, and the card attached would say thank you for being a friend.